Hi guys, so I'm going to read Captain Adam number 88. So, The Ravage of Ronthor. By, and it says, Ditko McClellan. And somewhere 8 million light years away, a space vehicle from an alien universe races through the void. But something is amiss, because a faulty functioning straight into the path of a meteor swarm, and the impact throws the ship into the gravitational pull of the nearest planet. Crashing upon the surface of the planet, an escape hatch is suddenly opened, and a strange atmosphere of the planet rushes in. Within minutes, I guess, just, I guess, so, so bugs or insects appear in the hatch, and the cargo of inspe insects for experimental purposes exit to begin The Ravage of Ronthor, written by Dave Caller, penciled by Steve Ditko. Inked by, by Frank McLaughlin, McLaughlin, lettered by a machine. And thousands of light years away on the planet Earth, Captain Adam is about to become involved in this insect invasion. A special crew is being assembled to participate in this project, Captain Adam. The rocket will take you to the planet from which the SOS originated. Do I understand that I'm going to help control the rocket from inside of it? Ordinary rockets work on fuel alone. This new one operates on the principle of a space warp and the breaking of the time continuum. The engineers will brief you thoroughly. At the Project Control Center, this is Frank Justice and Andy U uh, Yak Yanchus, the two men responsible for the rocket you'll be flying, Captain Adam. Gentlemen, Captain Adam and Sergeant Goslin. When the first SOS signals were heard, I've been working on a new design to test vibratory effects that a rocket will be exposed to in space. And that's where I came in. I've been in testing space warp theories that can make the mechanism work. So the government teamed us up here to develop a ship that could get someone to the planet in distress and investigate. Figuring that distance in light years, the SOS was centuries old, but I'm breaking the time continuum. You should arrive there sometime close after it first was sent out. And so you, you're on a rescue mission in space, which will take you back in time, and which only operate if you supply the necessary atomic energy. So Captain Adam begins his days of training, which will turn the atomic ace into the pilot and power plant of the strange new rocket ship. But won't you be gone a long time? By directing your atomic energy into the gloves, the warp will be activated. Oh. I don't know if that's a science... Oh, no, that's a scientist. So, by directing your atomic energy into the gloves, the warp will be activated and will carry you to the planet in days. But there still are things to clear up. But why are you, Cap? Couldn't someone else do the job? No, Gunner. A conventional source of atomic power of sufficient strength to operate the warp mechanism couldn't be installed in the space available. Besides, if there's big trouble on that planet, it will take someone with my type of powers to combat it. If I have any powers left, that is. If all goes well, the time warp of the return trip should bring me back within a week of my departure. The whole trip will take less than five days, providing I can supply enough energy for the rocket engines and warp device. I'd better answer the phone before it runs over. I just learned of your assignment, and I'm a bit apprehensive. I'll miss you every minute. Please take care of yourself. Don't worry, Eve. Just take care of yourself. I'll be all right. Uh, Abby has been asking about you. What am I supposed to tell her? Just that I'm a busy being a flyboy. Take care, Eve. I've got to go now. As the time passes, a strange SOS from space haunts everyone's thoughts and tell. Is everything okay, Captain? Hey, okay, Gunner. The ordinary rocket sought to get me off Earth safely. From there, it all depends on my atomic powers. A flawless countdown, and with a loud blast, the new rocket roars clear of the launch pad and streaks for the stars. Good luck, Cap. Let's hope whatever's causing the trouble up there is an allergy to Adams, his especially. Hours later, Captain Adam gets the go-ahead from the control for the, for the space warp entry. 
Everything depends on whether I can supply the energy needed. This is the moment of truth. Concentrating all his energy into atomic power, Captain Adams shoots bolt after bolt into the mechanism, running the warp mechanism, where the power successfully activates it, and the spaceship completes dis uh, disappears completely. Days later, the ship leaves the space warp and reappears near the planet, centuries in the past. Come in, come in. Funny. No response. Even though the distress signal is still coming through from that planet. Circling the planet a few times, Captain Adam locates the source of the signal and sets out to land as close to it as possible. No! Slowly, the ship sinks upon the dying flames of rocket energy, settling on the planet's surface. My compact radio set should be able to pick up the signal and lead me to the sender. What? What's going on here? What's What in the dickens is that thing? I gotta stop it before it wrecks the ship. If it gets to the rocket fuel section, I could be stranded here. That thing could explode. Cling. Ugh. That thing is like an armored tank. But at least it has the l let loose of the rocket. Got to use my powers sparingly, or I won't have enough for the trip home. Caught me off guard. Got to get out. And there's like, there's big bugs attacking him. What's this? Not only is it the built like a tank, but it carries its own natural artillery. It's sticking like a spider's web. My only chance. With an explosive roar, the side of the huge insect bursts into flame. That stopped him. Hope there aren't any too many more like him around. I got to hand. I ha I'll have my hands full. Looks like I spoke too soon. Now how do I stop this one? But before Captain Adam can decide on a course of action, he is hit by a blast of X-rays that stun him. Achoo, God, getting weak. That blast was too much. Got to snap. Achoo, there, I did it. Another second, and it would have been all over. Got to get back to the ship. I'll send it back on its landing gear later. First, I'll need a, a, to rest a bit. No sooner had the battle-weary warrior closed the hatch than he feel, fell exhausted to the metallic floor. Hours later, he rose refreshed to look out upon a scene from Dante's Inferno. This is incredible. Flames thousands of feet high. Gotta be prepared for those insects. Don't want to use too much power and get stranded out there. These should help if I should get into another fix. Setting his compact radio set to lead him to the point of origin of the distress signal, Captain Adam flies over the funeral pyre that was once a proud city. A whole city wiped out. But why isn't anybody here to try and stop it? There are the people who built the metropolis. Uh, or where are the people that built the metropolis? Uh, leaving the raging inferno behind, the atomic ace follows the constant signal being received on his radio until... This has to be it. The signal is growing stronger every minute. Landing in the very center of the magnificent city, Captain Adam is struck by the silence all about him. Still no sign of intelligent life. Where is everyone? What was that? Another one! Got to stop this thing. Maybe the chemicals from the fire extinguisher. Let go, you overgrown fugitive from a DDD commercial. So you say, like, bzzz. They say, like, bzzz. This stuff has no effect on it, but it helped me grit slip out of its grasp. That thing doesn't give up easily. Bzzz. The one way to tackle this baby is directly. This is the only way I can think of. To slow you down some. Now to get back to that city and find the sender of that SOS. Flying low, Captain Adam surveys the city below, listening to its radio until the signal is like a drumbeat in its ear in his ears. They're below me. Now I'll find out what they look like. Lang landing directly in front of the building, Captain Adam locates the main entrance and walks in there. Welcome, Earthman. It has been a long time since any humanoids have visited Ronthor. Don't be alarmed. There is no one here to harm you. Be seated. Make yourself at home, Captain Adam. I know all about you. As you enter the building, your mind and physical makeup were completely checked by my detection scanner. Every thought you've ever had was immediately transferred into electrical impulses 
and entered into my computer system. By the time you took two more steps, I was able to speak to you in your own tongue. Centuries ago, this very city was teeming with life. It was a civilization that lacked nothing except the will to live. Everything had already been done to make life easy and uncomplicated. We had never known wars and therefore grew and prospered constantly. With everything instantly available by the push of a button, life grew to be one monotonous day after another. The only reason people moved about was to relie relieve the boredom. And when all else uh, failed to give them any pleasure, they simply laid back and waited to die. And so every being on this planet got together and built a huge spaceships. But they left the machines to continue their jobs and radio devices to signal for help if any threat ever came to this planet. This memorial to stifling perfection must be preserved to warn others in this universe. Your race is adventurous and bold, but there will be more visitors and Ranthor must exist for them. Will you save what is left for them? Fantastic! A world with no one in on it. An SOS from an empty planet. And now a request to save it from the ravages of that insect horde. I've got to do it. Ronthor must be preserved. Determined to rid the planet of the gigantic insects, Captain Adam races back to the rocket ship at full speed. This has got to work. Those chemicals in the ship's lab should do it. Settling or Setting the huge rocket back on its landing gear, the atomic ace concentrates on the problem ahead. By ejecting this insectable through the empty rocket fuel tank, I'll be able to spray the whole planet and... Another one! I've got to get out into space and do this job anyway. Rushing to the manual controls, Captain Adam pushes the rockets into action, and the roar from their exhaust fills the ship. And even under the weight of another giant insect, the huge rocket breaks from its gravitational pull of Ronthor. Racing into the upper atmosphere... The rocket frees itself of the gigantic bug wrapped about it. Setting the ship into steady orbit, Captain Adam fills empty rocket fuel tanks with potent insecticide. By carefully covering this planet, I'll be able to kill off all those creatures. And when the atmosphere clears, Ronthor will once again serve its purpose. Days pass as Captain Adam completes the job. Those insect insects should be all dead by now. When the rainy season starts... The gas will disappear completely, and leave Ronthor in its silent peace. His mission over, Captain Adam slips on the gloves that make him a vital part of the rocket's motors. This had probably been the strangest thing I've ever done. I saved an empty planet from ravaging insects, but I better get back now. And so the spaceship once more enters the warp that carried it past thousands of galaxies in seconds. Homeward bound is Captain Adam. Days later, the rocket leaves the warp and returns to its normal space and time, but now magnetically tows something out of the warp with it. And when it begins to appear that the ship might have run into trouble because of Captain Adam being a day late, Captain Adam to base. I'll be landing any second now. He's back. But what is that other blip on the radar screen? A weird metallic object is seen surrounded by four-leaved clovers, a crystal ball, a black cat, and other objects of good and or bad luck. Whatever it is, this object will cause more adventure in the life of Captain Adam and all who work with him. So that'll be the next issue. But Nightshade, the Darling of Darkness. The image, a foreign agent with strange powers over mirrors, has kidnapped Eve Eden to get at her senator father and her, his defense bill. Interrupted in memories of the land of Nightshades, Eve has gone along to learn more about the image and his poetry of peril. What do you want with me? Let me go! Not until your father and the other senators agree to my plans. Created and written by David A. Kaler, artistically conceived by Jim Aparo. Just make yourself at home, Miss Jitsit. You may never get another chance to accept my hospitality. Boast, big boy. I could have you on your back long ago if I wanted it. My father will never agree to your plans. At the Eden Mansion, Senator Eden is reading the verse left by the image. With your, within my powers, your daughter Eve. So in this hour, you must again grieve. But at twelve tonight, I'll be back to see if you and your friends 
might to my plans agree. The image. Shall I call the police, sir? No. We'll have to let this image character make his next move. He mustn't hurt Eve. But what is Eve thinking? What is her plans? It's all like before. A threat to my life and no shadows to run into and change myself. We were caught by one of the Incubus's flying warriors. Run into the shadows and change, children. Escape. There's no escape this time. Let me go. I've got to save my children. Kick them all. The Incubus will reward us all handsomely. Mother, make him let me go. Set him free. Let him go. Get away, mother. Forget me. Frantically, she struggled to free her son, but there were too many of them. Have to escape. If only there were darkness. You can't get away in the brightness. You're ours. Safely in the shadows. Got to become a shadow. I'll get the girl. But where's mother and Larry? Where are they? You... You'll never keep us here. She has your saber. Get it. Forget me, mother. Run. Fool, she's been stabbed. I... You killed her. Suddenly, the world... All the world grew dark. Incubus is coming. Mommy! The woman is dying. Grabbing the tiny hand of her shadow daughter, the dying woman managed to use the inky darkness to enter ba back into her adopted world. But it was too late. Don't ever tell Daddy Eve. Go back for Larry. Promise me this. Promise. Uh. Mommy! I promise, Mommy! Tears don't become you, darling. I have delivered my other verses, and soon it will be over. He and the others will have it to give up their pl new plan to bolster your nation's defenses. My government doesn't, not, doesn't think much of it. Goodbye, dear. With no time for further memories, Eve seeks a way to escape. Snap. There's too much light in here. If I can only get it dark enough to become a shadow. My shoes. With a careful aim taken, Eve manages to plunge the room into darkness and... Now to become a shadow and get back into my room. And at the Eden home, puzzled legislators had gathered because of the strange poetry they had received. Who is this image? What does he want? I don't know, but he has my daughter, Eve. And now I've got you too. And if you don't agree to my plans... This poem will guarantee my success. Your bill to tighten the country's defense system must not be passed. You'll agree or die. Don't haste. Be tasty, image. Let me darken your outlook on things. And let me throw you into the ring of victims. Oof. Never expected that. Score one for you, image. Now it's my turn again. You're more than welcome to try. No! Low bridge. High bridge. It's a woman's right to change her mind. Aye. Now, I'm calling you. Fool, that bumbling idiot helped me. Now I'm control of things again, and I'll think I'll get the little bomb happy if no one minds. The lights! Somebody put out the lights! What happened? Where is she? I'll be delighted to let you know sometime. Here's a bomb for you, image. Pow! My only ch chance is to escape through the mirror. I just activated the explosive mechanism of the bomb. Bye-bye. Have a big blast. Ah. Click, 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 click. Mustn't leave without your package, Image. No, stop. My daughter might be there in, in there with them. Kaboom. There's no need to worry, sir. I rescued her before I came here. This is how all plans to destroy freedom should end. Seven years bad luck to all our en enemies. Click. Disappearing into the night, Eve quickly returns to assure her father of her safety. Dad, you're all right. Nightshade got in here in time then. Eve, she did rescue you. I wonder if the image was really destroyed, but I'm thankful I, like, I could save my dad, even if he can never know it was me. More of the dark mystery surrounding the origin of Nightshade is revealed next issue. Don't miss it. So... That's the end of that comic. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you could like, comment, and subscribe, that'd be appreciated. Um, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys later.